undercover, unrelenting, unforgettable. told you about what's ahead for you medically it's pretty bleak uh, what can you say more what is what is what do you mean bleak well dr slater said if i did, did not have the radiation that i would be with the one in two to four months two to four months yeah. and uh, you only found out about this what a month ago mm -hmm. how is that for you traumatic mm -hmm. very difficult to be yes and I know that we all have to do it it's sometime in our life. But it's really, uh, it's really something when it happens to you, huh? How long have you been sick? <laughs> Since October. In mm -hmm. October. Before October, you were you were working. Yeah. Up and down the phone poles. So, oh, 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 mm -hmm. strong. I consider myself strong. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I was sick like that. And, uh, you know, the cancer just <laughs> put me on a roller coaster, like, mm -hmm. and just went down. Oh, I wish you see these eyes when she does that. She wants to see because, uh, Pupils are reacting to light. Yeah. Yeah, babe. Are you have okay with me, sir? You have me see your Since last yeah, I know. I think I'll go ahead and call Ira anyway and see what he thinks about the number he had last night. Uh, vital signs are all okay. He has an occasional singular twitch, you know, from one arm to the other. And it's been an hour or so since his last seizure. I wondered if we could go a little faster. Oh, that'd be great. Bye-bye. Yeah. 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 What Ira wants to do is to give him liquid phenobarb in big doses 
every 12 hours. But Ira wanted you to know there would be a chance, unlikely, but a chance he'd quit breathing and die. Well, a seizure after a seizure, he could die too. Right. Yes. We don't know if it we don't know totally stop it. No, we don't know that for sure. We're gambling anyway, aren't we? Yeah. What we've been doing is gambling. Right. <laughs> Try my decision. Might as well give it a shot. It's the only thing we haven't tried yet. summer me and Crystal worked with him to get him to walk in it. Uh-huh. And he was just crawling and starting to sit up like that. Yeah. And then he started standing up and walking. And that's where he's getting a little help from Crystal. Look at that. Three short sure years ago. So oh. So he would have been five. Yeah. Okay, that's uh right after I uh, left Dr. Guggenheim when they told me he had his rare brain disease. And he started getting very sick. Yeah. And time to smile. Aww. Uh, I love his And smile. that was just uh, about three months ago. He's a beautiful child. Yes, he is. With a lot of complex problems. Yeah, but beautiful. He's, he's really sleepy. Yeah, that's where he's been since uh, since we started yesterday. the feeder Yeah. I'm gonna shine a light in your eyes, Mike. Little Michael is dying. Uh, it's sort of a matter of when and how he actually dies. Right now, despite Every attempt, he seems to be tending toward more and more frequent seizures. Sorry, boy. The degeneration that's going on in his brain is, if anything, accelerating. The other side. In a sense, what we're doing here is trying to orchestrate a passing so that he doesn't die seizing, um, so that he dies in a way that is acceptable to the family. There's no brain in that child, but there is something so profound. I heard that from everybody. This, this is a very special case. So what does the father do during all this? 
Oh, Char. <laughs> he turns him so that he doesn't aspirate, and he pets him and loves him and talks to him. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, he logs down every seizure. So he has it's, uh, sort of like positive um, duties and tasks so that he feels empowered and caring for his son. Oh, it's constant. Yeah. Well, he is. He's the one calling the shots and has been, you know, from the beginning. What about Crystal, the daughter? I know that she had the first loss of um, her mother no longer being at home. Is she preparing, do you think, that now someone else may be leaving her, someone she cares about? Well, you know, I asked Vicki to go in and see her because um, how do you know what's going on mm -hmm. in, in the head and the heart of a child when it comes to grief? I, you know, I don't, I don't think most of us know how to interpret it. Right, right. And um, it's my understanding when a kid loses a parent by abandonment. In their mind, it's the same as death. Mm -hmm. You know, so how she sees her little brother dying, I don't know. Are you nervous to go around, Michael? Yeah. Okay, why? Um. I don't know. Does he scare you to be around him? Um. Okay, why? Why does he scare you? He seizures. Okay. Do you feel sorry for your brother? Yeah. Why? Um, that he's always on that couch and that he can't walk and talk. He came out different than me. Every hour of every day is, is Michael going to die? Is Michael going to live? And that's what Crystal is going through, too. I sit here and do a lot of thinking while I'm up with Michael, where my life's going, where Crystal's life's going. Hey, Tiger. You can hear me talking about you, huh? Did you hear me talking about you? Oh, you got some big bright eyes now. Me, I didn't want to deal with death. It scared me. But now, with hospice in here, helping me through this, I can deal with it. We in hospice, I think, have just um, said loudly, "There's this is an important time of living. and." there's a lot of important stuff that happens. Now, it doesn't happen if symptoms aren't controlled because, man, if you're in pain, that's all there is. Um, if you're vomiting, that's all there is. But those things can be controlled. That's not rocket science. I mean, we have plenty of medical power to control physical distress. And once you do that, it is obvious, if you don't have blinders on, that once you do that, there is opportunities in the personal sphere for the person and the family that happens. We're trying to counter two generations of people who have associated dying with suffering by saying suffering can be controlled, but notice when suffering is controlled, this part of living that we call dying or the end of life isn't so horrible. It's poignant. It's always sad, but it's not horrible. That's an artifact of our modern um, mistreatment of the dying. Good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's the weather <laughs> or what it is, but mm -hmm. I feel better. I feel better about myself. I'm not as depressed. I feel that people care about me. 
so I don't feel alone. In other words. The first time I came, you told me that you were hoping to completely recover. Yes. And I still feel the same way. You feel that that's happening? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel just as good about that. Mm-hmm. How about your son? How's he doing now with, with the idea of you being sick? He goes to church constantly. Mm-hmm. And he prays. And he believes he's looking for a miracle. Mm -hmm. And he won't look any other way. Does he ever talk about what would happen if you continued to get sick? Well, he don't want to talk about it. He doesn't it, talk really. about but it at all. Okay. No, he don't. Mm -hmm. He don't even want me to think about it. Does that make it hard for you? <clears throat> um, no, because sometimes he needs to get get me back on track. Because sometimes I might be throwing a pity party, mm -hmm. and uh, he needs to get me back mm -hmm. on track. And your daughter was transferred from the army? Uh, from the Marines. Does she talk about your sickness? In the beginning, she was very upset. Mm -hmm. But seeing my faith in my son's faith, she has gone to believe it herself. I don't know, mother name. Where is she? Oh, there. Hi, Hi Hazel. Hi. Hi. <laughs> what did you think when you heard the doctor say it was cancer? Oh, gosh. I really can't. I really don't know. I just couldn't believe it. Uh -huh. And then because, like, she had worked, every day looked like up until that day. And all of a sudden, she got cancer. Where did she get it from, you know? Because the last two years, she said she had an x-ray and everything was negative. Yes. Yeah. It, just the way they wanted the lungs to be. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So now, here it is. This is it. I can't believe it. I'm in the medical field. Yes, I know. I had to do patient care and loving care and mother's care. I had to be three or four people in one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And everybody pitches in and help them. They all help. Mm -hmm. And I just love, I just love my family for that. Mm -hmm. You know? She, she, she been there for everybody. Like our fathers, they all left us. She still hung in there. She never left us like they did, you know? So if there was an example to follow for anybody, on how to be a mother and a father, it would be an eternity. It would be an eternity. The doctors basically wrote her off as far as she has months to live. You know, there's like nothing they can do. There's nothing they was trying anymore to help her because for them, medically speaking, there was nothing else to do. So we just prayed, and she has made great progress. A lot of people we know still don't think she's gonna yes, make it. Yes. And it's like hard, cause you know, when she believes she is gonna make it, and we trying to believe that, and then you got these people, you know, uh, you know, planning for the future, like your will and, you know, bringing mm -hmm. stuff to her, you know, and they bring that doubting spirit, you know. Just holding on to that faith, still standing on God's word. We'll see what happens. What's going to happen? down the road. Me, I, I don't think I'm going to be here forever. You're not? No. I don't think I'm going to, uh, I don't think I'm going to die. Not now. Not now. Um, Do you have a sense that when you're going to die? An old lady. An old lady? Old lady. <laughs> what would old be? Uh, 70, 80. 70, 80. <coughs> What happens if you don't get better? I don't have no choice about that. <laughs> yeah. Is that difficult to hear? That side? No. No, I'm not afraid. You're not afraid of dying? No. I'm not afraid. <sighs> Just don't believe that I'm going right now. <laughs> There's work here that he wants me to do. What's some of the work that you feel he wants you to do? Well, help others, pray with others, uh, be a minister. I believe he wants me to be a minister. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing okay. 
Yeah. I wasn't feeling so good yesterday, but I felt yeah. What happened? I feel a little better today. But I feel pretty good. Emotionally, where are you now? When I when I don't have all good days, I got a little depressed yesterday. But well, uh, it's unrealistic <laughs> to expect to have all good days. I know. Even when I was well, I didn't have the right. Good <laughs> okay. You can ask Ruby or somebody to call us. Me, the social worker, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Because maybe it would help you if you were able to speak to one of us. I honestly didn't think of that. I didn't think of, uh, you know, my feeling down as being an emergency. Um, so I didn't even think of well, it. Well, we're caring for the total you. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind, though. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Your nails look pretty. Well, you must be feeling good because you're back to getting your nails done regularly. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Vanity does not take a vacation. <laughs> I'm 62 years old. I'm extremely athletic, skin diving maybe a couple times a week, and backpacking in the fall. What did you used to do for work? I was a firefighter in San Francisco. Uh, you've lost a lot of your capacity and your ability. That must be a very tough thing. What runs through your mind when you're lying here at night? I'm scared. What? What do you? What are you scared of? Do you have any? Well, probably the unknown. unknown. Mm -hmm. Was it always so easy for you to talk about how you feel? No. How is that? Well, I was raised by a very strict mother who was an old German, and she believes in biting a bullet and dragging a leg behind you and that kind of stuff. And you were always like that, too? So what's different now? What it really gets to me is the people that work here. Hmm. Everybody has compassion. And if I want to cry, they just say, go ahead and cry. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've never encountered before hmm. in my lifetime. It's too bad uh, it takes this to get to it. What do you... Have you had any thoughts about what happens when you die? What do you, what do you think people go through? I've seen lots of people die as a firefighter. What was children and things like that, which is very traumatic. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about it? It was uh, Christmas time. And we had a pretty good fire. Mm -hmm. And I went into the room and I found two little kids in bed. So it's uh, it's hard when you try your best and you still can't uh, save them. Yeah, I think he's really going through this in a conscious way. Is um, this guy told me the other day he hasn't cried in 50 years until the last couple of weeks. Patients, uh, when it finally sinks in that they are going to die, it's terrible. But you have to watch for that point because that's a tremendous, that point is a point of possibility where uh, it's a, and it's a doorway. Despair, total despair and letting go like that is, an, is a major doorway through to a new place for that person where once they fall apart, they have a chance maybe to put things back together in a different way. I think that there are deaths way before the diagnosis of a right. disease or pathology. That right. There may be deaths of identity, hmm. deaths of ego. And if people really haven't spent time grappling with that, with rules that work realistically for them, hmm. they are devoid and they are in a chaos that 
they probably will succumb to and not survive. There's a Rumi poem. The way of love is not a subtle argument. The door there is devastation. Um, birds make great sky circles of their freedom, but how do they learn it? They fall, and falling, they're given wings. child, sleep on the hay. Well, I used to be a rambunctious renegade doing all kinds of stuff, and Michael went into his major problems. I just made kind of like a 100% turnaround, because I knew I had a responsibility here of two kids that I had to take care of. Well, I knew uh, when me and my ex started having troubles, I wanted to be with the kids, and she wanted a different life because I was uh, working as a custodian and I was gone a lot of the, most of the night and part of the afternoons I was gone. And she felt that she was taking care of the kids all by herself and she wanted a different life. And it's been that way for about three and a half years now. And uh, from what I understand, she wants the phone number to hear so uh, she can uh, see how Michael's doing. And the last time she even wanted to see him was back in July. How do you get through the tough days? Last week when I was here, you were, you were worried, you weren't feeling so well, you'd had a couple bad days. I'm taking it one day at a time, and I'm praying, and I'm saying, Lord, thank you for my healing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for healing me. You know, I'm trying to say that every day. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I don't feel well, you know, try to praise God every day. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that you taught to do, to, 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 yeah. you know, to give God the praise regardless mm -hmm. of how I feel. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if I might say something here, when you, when you start thanking God for your healing, you're no longer operating uh, with just the human wisdom. You're operating with the infinitesimal wisdom of God, His Word, divine providence. So automatically you move into another realm, which is the realm of faith where God operates. And it is via faith that you will be able to overcome any problem. Exactly. In my case, I tell you, I had experienced this past year. I was operated on for cancer of the colon but having gone to the hospital to pray for other people all these many years i used my bible mm -hmm. i kept on saying psalm 118 i shall not die but live for god has not turned me over unto death this is the day that the lord has made i shall rejoice in it mm -hmm. and i said that until it got into my spirit and i'm doing fine and steadily improving mm -hmm. All right, you recovered. Yes. And you're and you're back. Many patients don't have that experience. Right. What is there is there a an answer to the way they pray? Yes. Or what yes. You... When someone asks them, "Oh, how do you feel? Do you believe God uh, is healing you now?" and they say, "I hope so." Once you change gears and say you hope so, you actually become what the Bible calls double-minded. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then it nullifies your prayer. Mm -hmm. We must die. But while we're here, hey, let's have a good time praising God. <laughs> 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 to sing and dance for the Lord. Hey, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, before I go, I want to pray. Oh, and we say in advance, thank you for healing thank you. Sister thank Turner you. from thank cancer. You. From the thank crown you. of her head thank to you. the soles thank of her you. feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> she has a strong faith 
that supports her in her sickness and dealing with the days when she's not feeling well. But that same faith that reassures her that she's going to recover and go on to be a minister or whatever it is that she's hoping for also keeps her from facing some of the work that most patients are doing at this point of illness. The assessment of her life choices, the evaluation of how things have gone, how the things that she's pleased about, and the, ple the things that she regrets, the need to speak with members of her family and give them ongoing advice or wisdom to communicate to her daughter or her grandchildren, the thank yous or the forgiveness to her parents. The time spent as if she were getting ready to leave um, with family members is not being used in the, with this amount, with the amount of energy that she has. And if she continues to decline ever so slowly, by the time she recognizes that she is not in fact recovering, she may not have the energy to deal with some of the goodbyes. Are you tired? I'm always tired, yeah. Yeah. My body is just sapping away. You think I did a day's work. Do you get annoyed with your body that it, that it's not strong the way it used to be? There's nothing to get annoyed about. It's the reality of life. Uh -huh. You pass through this world, that's all you do. Mm -hmm. Has it been a good time for you, passing through? It had its ups and downs through the war, World War II. I've seen death. I've seen destruction. I've seen everything in my life that I, I don't want to even see anymore. Mm-hmm. What are you going to miss about being away from your family, Charlie? Well, I'm going to miss my wife. Mm -hmm. She's been very good to me. She's taken care of me. She refuses to put me anyplace else. So you're at peace with your life? I'm at peace with my life, at peace with my children, at peace with my wife, and uh, at peace with everybody right now. You told me that you felt the end was near, so this... I feel it's coming, little uh -huh. by little. Uh-huh. But you told me you were peaceful. I've been up there. I was operated on for... A colon operation. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden I found myself in a dark room. And I found the door. And I knocked on the door. It was beautiful inside. A lot of light. Beautiful music and everything. And he said to me, yes. I said, I want to come in. He says, what's your name? I told him, Charles Coins. He says to me, wait a minute. He closed the door. A couple minutes later, he opened it again, and he says to me, it's not your time yet. You go down, and we'll call you when we're ready. I, I really got to make sure about that. You, you don't want any morphine or anything like that. I just want to be real straight about some of these uh, medical things. Have you thought about going back and doing radiation again? No radiation therapy? No more. No more, okay? No mas. No mas. Because that's pretty much what, uh, what we would plan on doing in hospice, is taking care of your symptoms. But we're not going to take any more shots at trying to cure your brain tumor. What I'd like to really touch on today are some of the uh, subtleties of what it means to really connect with somebody and how to do that and how hard that is with someone who's dying, how scary it is and all that stuff and also how important it is because when someone is <clears throat> at the end of their life, it's very lonely, very isolated, very difficult, uh, particularly in a medical setting. Um, and the most wonderful healing uh, thing that can happen is somebody who's willing to come into the room and actually connect with you personally as they're doing their work. I don't think it was possible for Ralph to absorb everything that was happening to him all at once. A month ago, Ralph was backpacking. 
he was a to I think a total he-man. It's probably the hardest part of medicine is to deal with someone that you know you just really can't help. You're not going to get them better. So what do you do? On one end of the spectrum is curing, and on the other end is healing. As any of you know who have had relatives die, doors fly open and relationships get very turbulent, cross currents in families just uh, blow people out of the water, and you have to ver pay attention all the time to what's happening with family relationships as well as what's happening inside the person, because doors are flying open inside the person, too. Many things that you are able to keep unconscious all your life fly up and become and fly into your awareness and become very hard to handle. Ralph and his daughter haven't seen each other in 18 years. She's 36, five months pregnant. We had to call her three times before she would agree to come up and visit him. She and he did not get along. There's relationships he has with all his family and friends that are really tricky. It takes a lot of attention to those and a lot of a lot of bringing people together and again, hold, kind of holding a space for them to do their work in. It's very strange to be a very active man and all of a sudden he swoops out of that situation. Here I am. You never know what's going to happen to you. Yeah, it really brings a different perspective on you. Uh, you've, you've been able to, I mean, through your work and your life and your pleasures, you've been able to be vigorous, and, strong. And independent. And independent, yeah. yeah. So that loss of the, the ability to control your own life, your own movement, um, yeah, it is, it is the strong loss of, of your capacity to act out your personhood. But it seems to me that uh, in the midst of all that, uh, we're, 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 we're taking from it what it can give us. Well, he ain't gone yet now. Come on, let's break up. We're going to see each other a lot, and we're going to talk a lot, and we're going to have some happy times yet. Okay? Comes Donna. Really? Donna. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Roz, this is uh, this is our uh, uh, This is Ralph's wife. I'm Roz Gordon. I'm Chapman. Oh, hi. How are you? Yeah. I see your eyes. I haven't seen your eyeballs in. Um, Almost two weeks. Are you still there? Huh? So, how are you doing? Mia? Yeah. Are you on morphine or off? Off? So, are you ready to go out dancing? Huh? Yeah. I guess the theme in this patient's life has been a lot of loss and abandonment. He was, his wife told me, put up put in an orphanage from the ages of five to eight by his mother, which has led to the estrangement, I think, because she put him in the orphanage and not his sister. And so he's got a lot of issues with that. He also experienced the death of his eight-year-old son many years back. And I think the mother and sister need to be spoken a bit. Right. Um, they have been present. I've met them a couple of times. And um, it seems like some really powerful support things are going on now. The history may not be dealt with adequately, but the present is really very supportive. I think it's going to be tougher for his wife. She said, uh, I was hoping when Ralph and I were dating before we got married, we were really close. And I thought that when we got married, we'd get even closer, and it didn't happen. Apparently, he just took off on his, on his trips and just left her behind, and she's been left out the whole time. And I think she's really angry about it. And, she's not uh, the mother of this. Children, right? No, no. no. they've only been married seven years. My visit yesterday really revealed somebody very different who was in real good comfort care. And I think in the position where he can do the inner work that he's going to do. Your emotional side hasn't had as much exercise as it has had recently. And uh, it's a piece of what, what I guess you still needed to learn. That's kind of reassuring, isn't it? There's still something <laughs> that's... Uh, that's to be completed or to be worked. been hiding in all these years, and now it's coming out. Yeah. yeah. Kind of it's going down there, but it's finding that it's really important what you find down deep inside of you. And it would be a real loss not to have it now, not to be able to let your mother, your wife, your sister, and your daughter know that that deep part of you has expression beyond words. You're the 
this morning. Steadily improving, I see. Yes, Ooh, yes, yes. I love you. Um, I miss seeing you yesterday. Yeah, I know. How's yeah. everything with you? Everything's all right. I'm blessed. Oh, I know. I'm blessed. I know. Yeah. Dad, look at you. I love you so much. Yeah, I love you too. And I know you're getting stronger every day. I am. I know you I are. I am. God. Yep. And I was feeling pretty good this morning. Thank the Lord. Yes, I was. Steadily improving. Yes. And I'm going to come here, and you're going to be sitting out in that living room waiting yeah. for me. I want to yeah. get moving. All right. You know, I want to get this, doing something. You can do it. Uh-huh. You can do all of this. This summer, I don't want to be sitting things. in this house. You know, I don't, it's, I don't feel that I'm a good soldier if I'm just laying here doing nothing. And you know you're healed. Yes. And when you I know be I'm up healed. and out. Right. Well, That's the attitude. And you will get up and go. <laughs> We'll walk you to the door. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sister Turner, look at that. Thank the Lord. Look at this. I'm going outside this door soon. You I'm not gonna are. Me in you here. really are. Okay, how are you doing? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh. Mm. How are you doing today? Oh, fine, thank you. Good. So your hands aren't that cold, so it must be real nice outside. Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad at all. Yeah. Good. How have you been? I've been good. Good. How have you been doing generally? Generally, I've been... The last few weeks. Yeah. You know, I have my days. Yeah. Only one thing I want to look at this right here. When did you notice that? About last week. Was it like a full message? Yeah, see how it's close. It don't hurt me or nothing. Yeah. Any fevers? No. Yeah. Okay. What that is, is a lymph node. Okay. I think, I think you have a lymph node. That is. Um, that has become big. You know what the lymph node is? It kind of drains um, either an infection or the cancer. I'm a little concerned about it. You know, I'll be honest with you. And uh, I'm going to have to watch it. Okay. It, it does give me an indication that, that the cancer is still there. That a big shock to you? Uh, it's a setback. I'm not a shock. <clears throat> but it's a setback. But well, we have to take it as it comes. Sorry. Yeah. I have to be the bear of bear bears. <clears throat> well, I don't know. Yeah. I know it's bad. I don't know. So I don't want to, uh, you know, add to that. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm, I'm all right with it, you know. I'm just, I don't want to dwell on the problem too much. So I want to pray and ask for a solution. Pray to be completely healed. God's will. You know we're all praying for them. Yes. Mm. I know. But. And thank you. I think Anna is becoming more aware of a decline within herself, but isn't quite ready to speak about it openly, to me at least. The big new finding is a very large mass in her left neck, and this is a, a major change in the last uh, month. Um, she seemed very distressed, but would not show it, and she said, well, I guess I'll have to pray that much harder. Um, 
did not show any outward emotion, but I think it really did have a jolting impact on her. So I think we we may be heading into uh, an aggressive final stage of the illness. Because of all your IVs and everything that's being done, your insurance company has thought that it was fine to have you stay here. But the time is going to come, it always does, when they're going to say, well, we can't really cover this anymore. We're, you know, the potential here uh, isn't such that they're going to be willing to cover acute rehab forever. So when that time comes, we're going to have to figure out what the next step is. Don't look at me. And when you look at her, what are you, what are you saying? I'm saying you're my, my wife. What's that have to do with anything? <laughs> no, you get married, you take it without it, would you? Well, what does that vow say? We didn't take any vows when we got married, actually. Talking about the one that says in sickness or in health and no, all that? No, we never said that. <laughs> well, what may be the best way to ask it is, what are your expectations around that? When you marry somebody, you take on the responsibility of that person mm -hmm. for their health, their finances, and for their care. For their care. I think there's a fair amount of anger and frustration happening here, honestly, but I can't help feeling when I'm talking to you that you care about each other. Ralph's expectation of a marriage and mine were totally different. Hmm. So. Uh, how so, if you can say? Well, in mine, I thought marriage would be that you were intimate and talked and did things together and enjoyed being together. And I'm not sure what Rolf says, but it didn't, I wasn't really included in his life. He did what he wanted and he said he lives the kind of life he wanted. He didn't care that he didn't talk to his daughter for 15 years or not talk to his mom and sister for four years. He lives the kind of life he wanted. Mm -hmm. And yet you keep coming. I know, I'm wondering why. I don't, he doesn't really need me here. He's got a lot of people coming and everything. Well, that's like saying a baby doesn't need a, its mother's cure. Oh. What do you think you need from, from Donna? Love. Sounds like she's been trying, though. What do you, what do you think she needs from you? Well, she keeps telling me she wants an intimate relationship. Yeah, that Why may... Why didn't you want to do anything with me? That may be a tough... That may be a tough question to answer. You know, I'm well, then sure. make something up. I mean, I got to the point where all I... I just asked him to, like, would he play Scrabble with me once in a while? I mean, my expectations went from here to way down here. Let me just ask, in the situation that you're in now, Ralph, is there anything that you'd want to say to Donna that you'd want to say while you have the chance? Yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't fulfill your expectations. Okay. What stage was set? What's the next act for them? If he can say to her, I'm I'm sorry, with tears in his eyes, the way he said to me he wanted to say to her, I think they'd have a chance to break a lot of the old molds and just for a second maybe, uh, you know, see who they really are and why they've why they've been together and what they do mean to each other. Did you put the bolus on the paper, Crystal? Mm -mm. I think because it's been a long-term illness, because he's faced into the his imminent death before, mm -hmm. um, I I believe Mike when he says he's prepared. Mm -hmm. You know. But Crystal, she's really. Um, 
she knows, but she's she's really just kind of, I get, I get the sense of her being sort of suspended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she needs permission to be the little girl yes. and, and not the one who's responsible for everything, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the way she saves her money and the way she takes, you know, worries mm -hmm. about Mike. You know, it's hard to be an adult when you're a little mm -hmm. girl. Mm -hmm. the most beautiful hand. That little one over there was having troubles last night. She woke up crying. Mm. I wonder why your tummy's hurting so much. You think maybe you got some other stuff going on? She told me she would talk to you today. Oh, good. We're off for girl talk. He settled me down quite a bit, and now, after he passed away, I know I have a responsibility of catching up for the eight years that I lost with Crystal because I was always tied up with Michael. really doesn't think she's that sick, but she's feeling kind of nervous about what would happen if she was at school and Michael died. She'd rather be home, and if we couldn't work something out with the school so she didn't have to keep telling you she was sick. I could probably work something out with the school. Yeah, and it's okay to cry, because crying lets that grief out. Feeling better? Mm -hmm. Did you talk to her about your dream? Oh, I told her about some of it. We about stuff, so. <laughs> I heard that pop. Yeah, that was my back. <laughs> you feel good? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you two, what a team. Everybody has a different way, you know, to cope with it. Because I know Kenny, he's, um, you know, he don't like to be in the house a lot, you know. So they think he don't like to do nothing, but I think he's trying to cope with it that way, not to see it. And Robin, and Robin she seems to be coping pretty good. I bet if I would go to one of the psychotherapists, he would tell me, you in the now right now. You, it'll come to reality soon. Yeah, yeah I kind of keep smiling. That's the only way. They say grin and bear it. That's the old saying, but I keep smiling and bearing it. <laughs> I have to, for Kenny, for really for Kenny's sake, you know, because he has to have somebody to lay on. I think he's going to fall apart when it does come. We can go in this way, Stalker. Your house is right back there. Okay. Oh, that's the scripture. I'm trying to find, help me to find it. Scripture that I should mount up like wings of eagles. Because I know that you are not a God that lies. And I hold on to your hand. And I know that you will make that way. <coughs> there is no way. You'll make that way for me. You show me. You show me how to do what I ought to do. And I'm going to stand strong. Stand fast, Lord. And live this life, Lord. Make it live this life. I don't know what she told you. You sure she didn't say mash it? Yeah, mash potatoes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what she told you. She Well, last time I made the codfish, she told me to just mash it up and put butter on it. That's mashed potatoes. <laughs> Which one on the card? You want obey? Uh, yeah, put the obey on it and uh, paprika and um, parsley. Okay. God is the Lord. And butter. For his mercy, his mercy endures forever. Did you want Did you want a regular potato? Uh, or did you want mashed potato like that? Mashed potato. Mashed potato? Mm -hmm. 
He's lost everything, right? His lot. I think he has amazing loss issues. I think. Uh, I think he's in despair. Going to get the tools to deal with it. Well, see, a couple of things yeah. have happened over the last week. His his wife has come in, his buddies have all come in, and most importantly, his daughter, who he hasn't seen for 18 years, has shown up for the first time. And there's big issues between them. So they had a great meeting. He was semi awake uh, end of last week then uh, asleep on Tuesday. She's coming again tonight. And uh, I think I think he's uh, he really wants to see her and really wants to keep talking with her. And I, I think he's he's come back out probably to, to do partly to do that. Hmm. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, doing great. Yeah, look at that. It's it's not all real, Dad. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> well, I mean, it's <laughs> not the same color as it was when I was a little girl. <laughs> I, I'm using some help, uh -huh. but I, I'm letting it grow out right now while the baby, you know, while I'm still pregnant. I just don't want to introduce any dyes or anything that might hurt the baby. It's a name. Yeah, um, if it's a boy, Nathan, oh, we like Nathan, and if it's a girl, Julia, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be back if you like. Mm-hmm, yeah. I wouldn't be here otherwise, you know. I just wish, you know, you could still be here when the baby's born, but it's still good. The core of this whole thing is helping the patient be and the family be able to let go of things that have kept them bound together and constricted for their, their whole life sometimes. Powerful transformations happen, miracles happen with people. And it's not as simple as just people growing or people, uh, um, people uh, healing into something better. It's often not, it often doesn't even look or feel better. It's just fuller, it's just more human. How well do you remember uh, Lauren being here? Do you remember her visit? How was it? Pretty good? actively dying. I don't know if this week she'll, next week, this time she'll be here.
think she knows it too. I'm gonna work yesterday or today. How are you doing? Me? I'm fine. I mean, you know, like we knew, so it's just a matter of time. Man. But we already knew it was a matter of time. But I'm fine. Right, but it's very close now. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, you know, like I could look at her too and tell. So, I know. How's your brother? He don't know too much about the very close part. He's all right. You don't think he needs to know? Not now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, Okay. How are you doing? Yeah, all right. I'm feeling all right. How's she feeling? Mm. Not too good. Not too good. Mm. I knew it this morning when I left. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll be all right. You'll be okay? Mm -hmm. I was asking Robin about Kenny. Mm -hmm. If maybe yeah. he should stay home from school a day or so to be with Mom. Yeah. I don't know, you can toss it around in your head. Yeah, and see what happens. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know if, if mm -hmm. she went while he was at school, mm -hmm. how you would feel about oh, all of that. Boy. All right? That's true, too. So mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know how he's going to take it. Whenever you speak about it, you know, like, he don't want to hear it. So he don't even talk about it. Like, you know, the, the way we could talk, talk about it, so. One, two, three. Five. One, two, three. Six. One, two, three. Six. One, two, three. Eight. One, two, three. Nine. Break, break, break. Ten. Bring it up, baby. Bring it up. They have a mother, she wanna stay. She don't wanna leave, you know what I'm saying? She doesn't wanna pass on, and she's not believing that she's gonna pass on. You know, as kind of classically defined as somebody who is faced with a terminal illness denies it, says, you know, says that's a, it's a mistake, it must, it must be somebody else, um, they surely can't meet me. Um, then you go through an anger and bargaining where um, you get very angry and, gee, I've lived a good life. Uh, why is this happening to me? My neighbor down the block uh, does this, that, and the other thing, and I'm, I'm such a good person. I've gone to church. My faith has been strong. Um, and the bargaining part is, well, you know, maybe if, if I pray just a little bit harder or I'm just a little bit of a better person, then God really will look upon me and take this illness away. Um, and uh, the final stage is acceptance, and that is a real, not a resignation that, well, I guess I'm going to die, but a real heartfelt feeling that what is happening is happening, and it's not necessarily incorrect that, that we are a process unfolding. We know that when we come into this life, there will be death. And acceptance is, is recognizing that with all one's heart, that we are part of a process, part of the universe, part of the unfolding. Can we bow our heads? Oh, Father God, we come to say thank you, Lord. And Lord, thank you for thy many blessings. And Lord, we pray right now that you be with this family. And Lord, that you strengthen them in their hour, that you let them know that you are still in control. And Lord, sometimes we don't understand what you are doing, but you told us in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, we just ask that your will be done right now. Lord, go with this sister right now. Protect her. Lord, remove the pain if it be thy holy will. Lord, and if it be your desire right now to take her away from us, Lord, take it smoothly, Lord. And Lord, take it swiftly, Lord. Remove the pain right now. And let her know that joy is still in her heart. And let her know that love and peace is still there. Lord, then wrap your strong arm of protection around this family and what they must go through. Don't let them stand alone, Lord. Don't let them feel like they're walking this path alone. Just go with us and protect us along the way. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hi. Oh, is Kenny here? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Because, um, you know, he's my best friend and everything. I want to come see how he's doing. Sure, Kenny? Yeah. You're okay. Why don't you come in? Thank you. Thank you. 
Very sweet of you to come. It's just a shame. I'm sorry. He promised that, you me. Huh? He promised that. Kenny, man, if you ever, you know, need me to come over with him, right here, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, man, you ain't going right now. How long is it? A few hours, probably. No, I ain't believing that, though. No, no, believe. We came too far, kid. Came too far. I ain't believing that. What can we do for you? <laughs> Stay like this. Would it be okay if we anointed you? And then in, in our prayer would be that God would grant you your wish. Mom, what was all the praying for? For. for you was the praying that she'd be healed? Yeah. But even early on, your mother was very courageous in that she said that if death was to be, that was okay for her. It's not okay. It's not okay. Yeah. Do you have a sense of when it would be okay? When he said it, but we prayed it and passed him. I know you can go let it down. So it, would death be let God letting you down? Right now, because well, I would be confused when I let that cut. He promised us. And I know. <laughs> doctors, the doctors are limited in what they could do. I mean, people, people, I was being limited, but only, only he could do the impossible. Can't feel what she feels, but I ain't gonna let it down. Letting her go and saying it's okay, is that like letting her down? I'm not gonna just sit there and say, oh, if she goes, she go like that. I'm not, I don't wanna do that. No, uh, and I don't think that that's, that's human to, to do that. I think you deal with the, the fact that it's painful and it's not something that you want. No. But I don't you... wanna see her like that, but she's important yeah. to a lot of people. Oh, I love him so much. And he loves you. And there's a part of him that doesn't want you to go. I'm hurting so bad. You're hurting so bad. And you put up with a lot. I can't stay like this. didn't know your mom a few months ago. She's touched all of our lives. She'll always be in our heart. Your mom is never going to be a statistic. She's going to be part of us, Kenny. 
that was part of her healing and our healing. How's your headache compared to yesterday? Worse or it is worse? Well, we can kind of expect that. Would you like to try some pain pills again, like you did before? Can you move this leg for me? Does that left leg move OK or not? Can you wiggle your toes? I think when just some some part of Ralph finally accepted that he was terminal and he said, I'll never see my home again and I'll never get out of this bed. And he Ralph chose to die when he did. He had total control until the end. He died on a Sunday morning and well I said I'll see you tomorrow, but I told him it's okay, everything is taken care of, you don't have to worry about anything anymore. Um, your son's waiting to see you, you know, any positive type of thing that would let him just know that he's can leave if he if he chooses to. And his mom finally um, she was there before me, and the, the nurse told me that his mom finally told Ralph, you don't have to fight it any longer, because up until that day, his mom said, you can beat this. So I think when Ralph's mom said it's okay to go, he let go of that. It's been a journey, an interesting journey, sometimes painful and sometimes... So when Ralph told you he loved you in the hospital, and do you think he meant it or did I don't really know but I know that when he said it that I just put a wall up what did I I didn't want to hear it because I felt as though if he could never he could because he never told me um, the whole time we were together so to me it didn't feel like when somebody says I love you how I wanted it to feel but I, I do believe that Ralph did love me in his own way. Everything in life is a circle. Day follows night. Spring comes after winter. When we have done all the work we were sent to Earth to do, we are allowed to shed our body, which imprisons our soul like a cocoon and closes the future butterfly. And when the time is right, we can let go of it and we will be free of pain, free of fears and worries. Free as a very beautiful butterfly, returning home to God. This article in the paper came out on January 2nd. It's about Michael and his story. And uh, Crystal's mother, she called uh, Monday night right after the paper came out. She wants to see him now and I got kind of hostile and told her that she couldn't see him because uh, she caused a lot of problems before and uh, Crystal doesn't need that kind of stress right now and she's having troubles with her brother dying. She doesn't want to see her mother and I don't blame her for all the pain she's put Michael and Crystal through. And that's why I didn't want her to see Michael and uh, I had to change the heart, and I think she should come and see him just to set Michael at rest and maybe at peace and let him go. That's one person that he hasn't seen in almost seven months. Mike feels, in part, that Michael is waiting for his mother to say goodbye. But they think they're very on edge about um, Michael's mother Michael's visiting, mother. but she hasn't been there since last summer yeah, and that was a July fiasco 
a very upsetting <laughs> visit, and they're, they live in tension that she's going to come by after this. I have some concerns about Andy taking 24-hour calls seven days a yeah, week for this patient. Good. This is a really unique situation in my life, and it's been almost a year I've had this child. And if I was dysfunctional, if my skills were interfered with, if I was not professional in clarity and compassion and ability, I would know it. And I am all of those things. My heart is given too. And I will have tears, and I've had them already. And but I, not be served. I've got to. This is something I need. I hear you. I hear personally. you loud and clear. Just let me ask, would you not be served by having somebody else take call with the proviso that if the situation changed, you were called so that you could have your heart connection nurtured but not have the professional responsibility uh, when you're not otherwise on call? I, read, I did not set out to fall in love with this child. I, I, I don't know how to express uh, what, what this case has meant to me. You know? Time to change your heart. I think you need to, Michael needs to hear your voice. So you can come over and visit with him. Uh, how about 45 minutes? Yeah. Uh, she's going with Dad. Okay. All right. Five minutes, that'll be about six, right? Yep. Okay, we'll, we'll be out of here. What is it? Where are we going? Why did it be out of here? You know, you enough attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys later. And, bye -bye, uh, and the four legged one? Okay, bye. Come on, Jay. Crystal. Bye. 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 You have a good time. Come here. Stay out of trouble. Come on, y'all. No, give Grandpa lots of trouble.
you know, I have this real, uh, real, I won't call it a gut feeling or a hunch. Okay, you got that one. Not doing good. I'm calling Andy. We flipped him back over. The egg crate stuck to the little button and it's starting to bleed now. Okay, bye. trying to see him for quite some time but it just his father just wouldn't let me um and i couldn't find nobody to help me nobody would help me let me see my own son
those who came to him to care for or live with a sick, some would say a damaged child, looked in his eyes and said first, wait, who is this where there is supposedly no consciousness? He brought people together who were far apart. Because of him, those around him changed their attitudes, their philosophies, and even their lives. This baby who changed so much this little corner of the world, who taught so many what love and life means. I believe he has returned to God who sent him. I think it was intended that he spend his last months on the couch in his family living room, to be part of the ebb and the flow of the life of the house. And the first thing that anyone who came through the door saw. But most important, being on that couch meant that if one wished to get close to him, one had to kneel. I believe this was the intention of the one who sent him to us. In growing this thing called family, and healing, and creating community, he's given us all so very, 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 very much. His life was tragic and also triumphant. And he will be missed. <laughs> Thank you. 